Hello students, welcome to EPG Parsala. In this session we shall discuss on the topic basic meteorological instruments and observational techniques. The learning objectives of this module is to know the different types of meteorological observations, to know about the various meteorological instruments and their functions, to know about the observational techniques and to learn about the importance of each meteorological observation. Let us start with the types of meteorological observatory. One is called surface meteorological observatory. It has six classes. Class 1 where both eye reading and self recording instruments are there. In class 2 only eye reading instruments are there and observations are taken at least twice daily. In class 3 only eye reading instruments are there and observations are taken once daily. In case of class 4, 5 and 6 lesser number of instruments are there or in some cases non instruments observations are taken only. In case of agromet observatories they have been classified into three types one is principal type then ordinary and the third one is auxiliary type. Now what should be the ideal site for the observatory? The IMD which is the nodal agency of weather observations and weather services in this country they have prescribed the standard size which is 55 meter along north south direction and 36 meter along the east west direction. A well exposed it should be a well exposed bare plot level plot and located more or less at the center of the area. It should be free from water logging and should be easily accessible under all weather conditions. The soil type of the observatory should be representative of that locality. It should be a good distance away from the large obstructions like tall trees, buildings, main irrigation or drainage channels etc. Also it should be properly fenced with barbed wires for safety of the instruments as well as free air flow. Now another important thing is the hours of observations. In case of surface observatory, regular surface observations are taken at 3 hourly intervals. The synoptic hours starts at 0 GMT and then observations are taken at every 3 hour interval that is 6, 9, 12 likewise up to, up to 21 GMT. However, in most observatories in India, two observations, one morning observation at 8.30 hours IST and another afternoon observations at 17.30 IST are recorded. For agrometeorological observatories, morning observation is taken at 7 LMT and afternoon observation is taken at 14 LMT. LMT means local mean time. Then in which order the observation should be taken? Data recording should be started 10 minutes preceding the hour of observations and in the following order. First comes wind instruments, then rain gauge, then thermometers and then barometers. Non-instrumental observations like clouds visibility etc should be taken in the interval of 3 minutes of first and second reading of the anemometer or else it can be taken before commencing of the instrumental observations. Now the various instruments and the, the observation methods let us discuss with wind vane start with wind vane. Wind vane records wind direction, wind direction is the direction from which wind blows. Direction is determined with, response, uh, with reference to true north and expressed to the nearest 10 degrees or 16 points of the compass. This instrument is a balanced lever which turns freely about a vertical axis. Like an arrow, the one end is like an arrow and the other end is like a flat plate. So the narrower end points to the direction from which wind is blowing. Next comes cup anemometer. It records wind run. There are three large semi-conical cups fixed at the ends of three rods and these are mounted symmetrically about a vertical axis. Due to the wind pressure difference between the concave and convex sides of the cups, they rotate. These rotations of the cup assembly are counted by suitable device kept inside a waterproof aluminum housing. The counter is read at the beginning and end of a period to obtain the difference that is the wind run. And then if we divide the wind run by the time period, then we can get mean wind speed. Next equipment is Dyne Pressure Tube Anemograph. It is used for continuous recording of wind speed and directions of wind. The details of wind structure can be known from this kind of equipment like the occurrence, time of occurrence of maximum and minimum gust speed, then occurrence of a squall, etc. The direction is measured and recorded by wind vane and a mechanical twin pen recorder. In case of speed, it is measured by pyrotechnic static tube. The difference in pressure 
in the pressure and suction tubes of this equipment is directly proportional to the square of the wind speed and is recorded by a float manometer that is on a chart which is wound on a clock drum. The next equipment is ordinary rain gauge. It measures the total amount of rain for a given time period. The essential part of it is a collector with a metal rim or of truly circular shape. The size is generally 100 to 200 square centimeter. Then there is a base, a polythene bottle and a measuring glass. The collector and the base are made of FRP that is fiber glass reinforced polyester. The rim of the gauge should be exactly horizontal and kept at a height of 30 centimeter above the ground. To measure the rainfall, remove the funnel or collector of the rain gauge, then take the uh, liquid in a polythene bottle and pour its content in the measuring glass. Uh, the, in the measuring glass, it is already graduated and the depth of the rainfall can be directly read. Then comes self-recording rain gauge. It provides uh, continuous recording of the rainfall. The principle governing it is that rainwater entering the gauge uh, uh, via a funnel to a receiver. The receiver consists of a float chamber and a siphon chamber. A pen is mounted on a stem of the float and as the water level rises, the pen records on the chart which is placed on a clock drum. Clock drum revolves once in 24 hours or 7 days so that a continuous record of the movement of the pen is made on the chart. Once the, the automatic siphoning occurs from the, once the pen reaches the top of the chart and as the rain continues, the pen rises again from the zero line. If there is no rain, then the pen traces the horizontal line. Next equipment is sunshine recorder. It measures the daily duration of bright sunshine. It consists of a glass sphere which is about 10 centimeter in diameter. This glass sphere is mounted concentrically in a section of a hemispherical bowl which has three slots to hold three different type of card. During summer time, long curved card is used and this is put at the bottom slot. The time during which it is used is 30th, uh, 13th April to 31st August. The next type is card is short curved uh, card. It is used during winter time and it is put at the bottom slot. The time during which it is used is 13th October to end of February. The third type is straight or equinoxial card. It is put at the middle slot and used during 1st March to 12th April and then 1st September to 12th October. The instrument is kept at open exposed place at 3 meter height. Then comes thermometer. There are four types of thermometer, maximum minimum thermometer and driable wavelength thermometer. These are kept inside a Stevenson screen. The Stevenson screen is a rectangular box with a sides and door double louvered and the roof is double layered. The base of the box is at 1.25 meter height and door opens to the north in the northern hemisphere. Such arrangement is to avoid the exposure of direct sun because the thermometers are meant for uh, not the temperature of direct rays of sun. In all the types of thermometers, mercury A is used as a sensing element, but in case of minimum thermometer, alcohol is used. There is a dumbbell separate index inside the, uh, your minimum thermometer and we should read the end which is furthest from the bulb to know the minimum temperature for a given time period. Now comes soil thermometers. These are also mercury in glass thermometer which has a bend of 120 degree in the stem just above the bulb. It is installed with a triangular iron stand bent at 60 degrees. Soil thermometers are placed at different depths at surface then 5 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter and 30 centimeter. These are installed along a line running east to west. And the measurement is made up to 30 centimeter because variations can be seen beyond that depth the variations are generally less and generally not measured. Soil temperature probes with digital meters are also nowadays used to record soil temperature. Next is grass minimum thermometer. It is also known as terrestrial radiation thermometer. It is used to obtain information about the occurrence of ground frost at night. The instrument is exposed on a plot covered with a short grass 2.5 to 5 centimeter height. It is kept on two y separate wooden supports with the bulb just touching the tips of the blade of the grass. It should be read at the hour of routine morning observation. 
After the reading is over, the thermometer is kept inside the screen with bulb downwards until the evening. During evening time, it is set again and put over the grass. Thermograph provides continuous and automatic record of air temperature. It is placed inside the double Stevenson screen. Thermograph has a temperature sensing uh, sensitive element. Generally, a biometric strip is used as a sensor and it is connected by a system to a pen. That pen records on a chart which is fixed on a drum. A standard IMD drum is a fixed clock type. They have diameter of 93 millimeter and 130 millimeter in height. The next equipment is hair hygrograph. In case of hair hygrograph, hair is used as a sensing element because human ear is sensitive to relative humidity of the air. Its length changes proportional to the logarithm of the changes in the relative humidity. The hair should be kept clean and free from dust. It should be regularly washed with distilled water. This equipment is also placed inside the double Stevenson screen. Our next equipment is barometer. Barometer is used to measure uh, air pressure. There are different types, but in most of the IMD observatories, Q pattern type barometer is used. Its essential part is a glass tube about 90 centimeter long. The tube is closed at top end and the open, its open is below. Then there is a cistern and a brass scale. The glass tube is filled with mercury and its open end is dipped in the mercury in the cistern which prevents air from entering the tube. Above the mercury column in the tube there is an empty space and care should be taken to remove all the air from this space. The mercury column in the tube is supported by the pressure of the air on the surface of the mercury in the cistern. Next equipment is psychrometers. Psychrometers generally it is a pair of dry bulb and wet bulb thermometers. It is used for measuring temperature and humidity. There are two main types, one is Osman psychrometer, another is wheeling type psychrometer. In case of Osman psychrometer, this dry bulb and wet bulb is there and air is suck clockwork fan. The bulb of one thermometer is covered with a thin muslin cap and each time the psychrometer is used it should be weighted with distilled water. In case of wheeling psychrometer, aspiration is provided by wheeling or rotating the thermometers. Desired speed is 5 meter uh, per second, which can be obtained by giving 4 to 5 revolutions to this uh, psychrometer. Next equipment is class A pan evaporometer. This consists of a large circular pan with a diameter of 120 centimeter. A stilling wheel is provided which has three small holes and uh, at its base. The stilling oil is provided to ensure that there is no ripple on its surface so that the level of water can be accurately read. The amount of water lost by evaporation from the pan during any interval of time is measured by adding known quantities of water to the pan from a graduated cylinder whose diameter is one tenth that of the diameter of the open pan. The readings are taken generally at 8.30 hours IST and in some observatory a second observation at 14.30 hours is also taken. Now how to record evaporation data with a class A pan evaporometer when there is a rainy condition. Now there could be rainy light rainy days, there could be heavy rainy days. During light rainy days when water level is still below the tip of the hook gauge or the reading point, this formula is used. It is evaporation is equal to water added in millimeter divided by 100 plus rain in millimeter. For heavy rainy days, when we need to remove water to get the water level and, uh, up to the tip of the hook, we need to use this formula. Evaporation is equal to rainfall minus water removed divided by 100. Our next equipment is Duke Duvoni Dew Gauge. It uses wooden blocks of 32 by 5 by 2.5 centimeter cube dimension, which is coated with red oxide. The chemical is Johnson's and Nicholson red oxide. This is this coating is done to give it a smooth surface so that it can represent the leaf surface. The dew gauges are kept at uh, different heights, namely 5 centimeter, 25 centimeter, 50 centimeter, and 100 centimeter above the ground. The instrument is set after sunset and the observation is taken just before the sunrise because if you delay then sunrise will 
caused the evaporation of the dew and we will not get the actual measurement. The amount of dew over the dew gauges are compared to the standard dew photographs which in a scale ranging from 0 to 9, 0 means no dew and 9 means no observation. Now, soil moisture observation is uh, taken in most agrometric observatories. It is usually measured by gravimetric method. Soil samples are collected in aluminum boxes and those are dried at 105 degree centigrade till a constant uh, weight is reached. Generally uh, based on soil and moisture content 24 hours to 48 hours is required to attain this constant weight. And moisture content is calculated using the following formula. Soil moisture content percentage, gravimetric moisture content is weight of wet soil minus weight of dry soil divided by wet soil uh, divided by weight of dry soil into 100. Now the non-instrumental observations, that means instrument, uh, observations which do not require instruments uh, without the aid of the instruments also can uh, these uh, parameters can be measured. Uh, one of them is cloud, the cloud amount is uh, reported in terms of octa. If the sky is completely cloudless then it is 0 octa, if it is completely overcast then it is 8 octa. Then main groups of clouds can be uh, can also be identified like uh, high cloud medium cloud or low clouds. Then cloud height that is the height of the base of the cloud from the ground. It can be measured uh, estimated with the help of balloons or during night time by searchlight also it can be estimated. The direction of movement of cloud is usually can be visually estimated nearest to the 8 point of the compass. To summarize there are 6 classes of surface meteorological observatories and the data recorded in all, all the observatories at a standard prescribed hours. Data recorded in the following order, first wind instruments followed by rain gauge, then thermometers, then barometer. The wind direction and speed are recorded using wind vane and carpaniometer respectively. The maximum, minimum dry bulb and wet bulb thermometers along with thermographs are used to record temperature. Sunshine recorder is used to record bright sunshine hour duration. Soil temperatures are measured at different depths. Grass minimum thermometer is used for information about ground frost. Psychrometers and, uh, and hair hygrographs along with your dry bulb and wet bulb thermometers are used for computations of relative humidity. And the information on routine meteorological parameters helps issuing advisories to the farming community and also are required for different societal services. Thank you very much.